Hey guys, how's it going? Back here again in the shed, loving it. So last time I talked to you, which was just yesterday, if you've uh, already seen the videos, um, or have just tuned in to watch this one specifically, um, this is one I actually don't know the guy who's um, requested the video, but it was on one of my um, one of my videos. He commented and he said, um, "Can you do a four six build?" And I said, "No." I said, I don't have any parts. I don't have anything for a 4.6, you know. I just, I just rebuilt for the second time um, my new 4.6, which is in the video yesterday. And um, I don't, I didn't have any parts. And then after a while, I sort of, I was sort of going through things and, and having a look. And I'm like, maybe I do have the parts. So anyway, I've been busy cleaning today the parts and stuff like that that I need for this uh, and I just wanted to do a crankcase assembly so we're talking PTO bearing, clutch bearing, oh sorry, um, flywheel bearing, uh, cases together, uh, maybe the seals in if I get that far off so I've got limited time left today but um, that'll be that's the first step anyway that's what you need to do if you're building a saw so I cleaned up the flywheel side of the case and we're going to get into that now um, so what I want to do first is the flywheel side and get that bearing in there so I can just um, move on and build. Okay, so here you go, here's our, here's our flywheel side. All right, that's all mean in there. Now I don't have any tools for the flywheel side to uh, get the bearing in there. Um, so basically this is what I use. It's a big long bolt, I don't even know what it is. M12 maybe or something, M13 or something, I don't know. Um, it's a big bolt anyway. And um, that seems to fit right in the notch of my long, um, this is a 32mm deep socket, right? deep impact socket. And that square bit fits in there and sort of just locks it off. So it's really handy for this. Um, and this is not a perfect science, this sort of, doing this sort of thing. Um, the other thing I, I do is I um, uh, use bearings as spaces on the side that I'm putting the bearing in through. So the bearing goes in through the side. I pull the bearing in through the side that this goes in, okay? So that the crank sits in um, because you can't go through that side. It's just, you no, know, you can't. See, big hole, little hole, okay? All right, let's move on. So, hopefully I'll be able to get you guys a good camera angle. And you can sort of sit back, chill, and see what we're up to. So the first thing I like to do, and you probably, if you're a regular watcher of my videos, is, um, is I like to grease up the inside of um, here with a bit of lithium grease. And if you don't already know, the 4.6 is my favourite saw. Um, it just is. I just have a... It's just an, a nice saw. I just have a spot for it. And I just like it. Um, in saying that, I haven't had a go with the um, 4.62 or the 500i yet. So hopefully that will come in the future. Right. So here we go. That goes in there. I place the, the bearing that's going in there. And these are um, these are Hutzel bearings. Um, so like I said, this, this saw is going to be a bit of a bitzer. Um, it's got genuine, the cranks, crank and crankcases are genuine. Bearings are Hutzel. And um, I'll try and keep up with what's what as we go through. So that all goes in there. Um, and then this on the top, and um, nut on there, okay, and you sort of get that scrunched down, so that bearing sits in there nice, and you've got to watch it as it goes in, because um, the bearing can tend to, like, um, 
like tilt or rock inside the case there. So you don't want it to do that. You want it to go in really even and smoothly just so it, um, these Hutzel ones actually have a sort of a, a not a easier to put in the still ones because the still ones are um, they've got a straighter edge on them. But these um, these Hutzel ones actually have like a I don't know if you can see that, but it's almost like a bevel on the edge of it. So they actually sit in there and go in a bit easier um, than the still ones. But I mean, hey, if you had the choice, you'd, you'd have genuine, wouldn't you? Um, but like I said, why I'm not building with genuine is because this is a bit, so this is like, I just found some parts in my shed and I'm building a saw. Okay. So I'm just sort of fiddling around with it because I'm just trying to get that tightened down nice and there's nothing really wriggling around. And then from there, this is a 19mm nut. So I just get my 19mm on there. Just simply crank that into place now that is actually I don't know if you can see that but it's actually the bearing is tilted down like this and it's starting to go wrong so um, I'm just gonna undo that and that is actually the one of the not so good things about having that bevel either is it just the way it just sits down like that it can um the bevel on the edge of the bearing can can start things going straight so i'm just going to straighten this up just just with light taps okay and there the hammer right that's nice and straight now so i'm happy with that I'm hoping it'll just go straight through the rest of the way. But it's, like I said, it's not a not a perfect science. So I just load all this back up again. And go back at it. The other side's a lot more simpler because I actually have... Um, proper tools for it and it, so it sort of sits a lot a lot smoother I'm sorry just fiddling around with things yeah everything goes in a lot smoother I actually put the um I've started to with this tool I've got now for doing these I've started to put the um um started to put the the bearing on the crank and pull the whole thing through rather than put the bearing in then uh, then put the pull the crank through with that so I don't have to muck around with this kind of thing on that side anymore. Oh, that's not sitting right. Alright, that's sitting right. So I'm going to go at it again. Yeah, same side again. This is the tedious part of, of using DIY tools. I don't actually have, haven't actually seen anything for getting bearings through, and I don't even know really the proper process, process that still would use for getting this side through. Um, imagine they'd have some cool tool. Um, straighten that up again. Now, you can say what you want about this. It's not a proper technique, so it's not proper. But it gets job done, and bearing is fine, okay? Only time I've had a saw or build fail from bearings is when I mucked around with it and put ceramic bearings in it. And you can see that saga somewhere in my videos. 
That's why I ended up having to build my 4.6 again, because I put ceramic bearings in and they chewed out the inner races because they're so freaking hard. So hard. Um, might put another bearing on there. Oh, yes. oh. Yeah, that one will do. Just need another spacer, so I've got three bearings on there now. Becomes a bit of a pile to juggle. Once we got this side in, we're sweet, we're away. We're like, all the other things is pretty smooth, plain sailing. I say that, but there's probably something I'll muck up. And this. And here we go again. Just gonna straighten these bearings up. I'll try to anyway. All sitting nice. Like I said, this is an imperfect science. I've probably said that three times now. Anyway, I'm just going to keep this going back in. Oh, that's um, that's sitting nice now. You can actually feel it. You can once it's sitting nice, you can actually start to feel it just glide in, and it just becomes effortless. And that will seat down in there without. You know, you it'll just tighten up, you, and don't go any further. You don't need to. Right, it's that's it just hit it now. It was like a little tiny turn more, and it's bedded. Um, it's not going to go any further. Um, so that's that bearing done. Um, you will see a lot of guys out there using heat for this process. Uh, it's not, in my opinion, my humble opinion. It's not a good idea to use heat on cases um, at all. Cases and bearings with nylon races and just don't do it. Don't do it. I've actually never done it myself. I've seen people do it and the extreme temperatures you get everything heated up to and um, yeah, don't do it can if you want like if you if you got you know if you if that's the way you go and you want to chuck your bearings in in the freezer and get the moisture in there and and um heat the crap out of your cases and and pop the bearings in and and uh yeah you go for it um not me it's not how i roll i i don't think still would do that process in factory I mean I know they wouldn't do my process either with but I think you know I think that the bearings would be cold pressed in that would be my opinion um, like I said as humble as it is um, but yeah so that's um that's my little kit I use for um, getting these in and plus a few bearings and stuff like that but now that's over I can move on to so the easiest side. So we can set this part of the case away now. You can see that bearing's in there. Uh, it's, it's sitting up tight in, in here. All right, it's turning. It's nice, it's good. The only other thing I'll do to that is before you put this other side in is make sure you grease in here. I'm not gonna do that at the moment. We'll come back to it. So I'm just gonna set that aside and we'll carry on with our um, our bearing um, I'm just gonna put it like that so you can see the vice um, so the next thing we have to do is our our crank we've got one here and our PTO side bearing um, you can see why you don't want to heat anything with these because that nylon race will just die all right um, this um, yeah just don't do it You'd have to, I think you have to heat these as well or cool them or, I don't know. It's not good anyway. So now I'm just going to get a, um, 
this goes, you can see uh, the side with the taper. Okay, that's your flywheel side. All right, that's the bearing we just put in. Now we want this, this side to go in, okay? So I'm just gonna grease, once again, grease the inside of that bearing. Okay, just a little bit of grease. Selfs everything, slide home. All right, and that goes, whoa. It goes on there. Um, man, that goes on there. That is a this is a this is a Hutzel bearing and a um Yeah, yeah, that really goes on there. This is a genuine this is um I should have checked this before I started the video perhaps, but that's not meant to really function like that. Let's see. I know that's a brand new bearing as well. Got another bearing here. Let's see if that's the same. That is the same. can't remember now I, I'm, I'm remembering something like this happening on my um, other saw alright I've got another pack of bearings here that's a hut saw as well that'll probably be the same oh it's got a needle cage bearing in there it's huh. another pack that, that'll be the same as that um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to roll with it stop it um, so that will go on there. I'm pretty sure this was like this on my last one. Those bearings just absolutely slide in there. Um, yeah, pretty sure that was like that. It hasn't affected the running on my other saw. But I don't like that on there though. I don't, really don't like that. This is a genuine. See that genuine? Um, yeah, they all do it. Even the genuine ones, and this is a genuine crank. Um, the crank is not worn. Anyway, so I'm just gonna roll with it. Let's build it. Right. I'm pretty sure that happened on my I got a fright when that happened on my other so normally you have to punch these on with a socket, okay? So we're gonna use this now to pull through the other side of the saw. Now how I do that now is I've got this tool. Um so that's why I was showing you the vice because I was gonna punch it onto there with a socket. So I've got this tool. And this sits onto um, here now. All right, once the crank's through, so we'll grab the crank and the bearing. Oh, just while I remember, we'll grease up the inside of this um, case as well. Yeah, I think those four sixes are the only ones that those, those bearings go like that, just sort of slop on there. Um, but like it's all sealed in there. It shouldn't it shouldn't cause any problems. It hasn't on my other one. So you can just slot this through there now. Um, slot that through there. This comes down. And remember it's a left hand thread. So to go on there, you have to wind to the left. Might be easier with a spanner on there. Might be 
doing this ass without face. It's been a while since I've, I've done this actually. Take this off here. And I'll put that onto the crank. It's a good tool once it's going. It's a really good tool. Okay, so that's the end that goes up in the thing. That's a small one. This one goes onto our crank. Okay, so nice and solid onto the crank. That goes up in there. wind that back far enough so this will sit down on there nicely. Okay, so that's all sitting down on there and in there. Now you put your... Actually I'm not going to sit that one inside there. I'll put it on here. Where's my... I do this all, all this stuff off the saw building jig because the reason um, the jig uh, uses the bar studs to hold the casing on. So once we're through this, this side, I then put this half before I put that connect up the other half onto the saw jig. Okay. So... Now, we can see if I can remember which way to pull this through. And that is just going, yeah, so you go to the left, and that is going in just me. Now, the thing about this is you set the bearing to go. So it just meets up with the oiler. I haven't got the oiler in there and it's hard to see with this jig on. But I can show you with an old bearing. Like, you can see the groove in the bearing, right? The groove in the bearing actually fits up in the oiler like that. That's what it goes against. Okay, so you can see there's a bit of gap in there and everything like that. But if you've done it right, your your oiler should be bared hard down onto the onto the ring of that bearing. Okay. So that's what I'm looking for, and the bearing should be almost flush on the inside of here as well. So it, I've just got a little bit more to go, and then I can check it with that oiler. Pretty sure that is it. Right, to get this jig off, take this off. Because that fixes it down. Got this jig from Hutzel, guys. You can go into their parts. Order one. If you're building saws, it's um I've decided it's pretty much a must-have. So now this can all just turns back the other way. This comes off. I don't never tighten these up, eh? I just leave them all on there loose. As long as they've got plenty of thread on them, just leave them on there loose because you don't want to be battling with getting stuff off like that. So I'm just going to put the put the oiler down. It goes in there like that. And I just want to um, I just want to check that that's meeting nice. This is 
it's not quite there. To be honest, it's not quite there. Um, so, I'm just going to pull it a little bit more through. So that goes in there. Um, this goes on again. And I just go right down so it's, um, oh, you can't really see it, but um, so just so it's covering that thread so I know it's all on there, but I don't tighten it up. So again, this goes on. And start screwing in. And go till it's just, back it off a bit. So it's sitting level on here. Down on there. That's it. Okay, so off with this. This comes off. Is it, you get a um, the great thing with this tool is you get a whole bunch of um, you get a whole bunch of tools, um, a whole bunch of these fittings with it, so you can do a full range of ProSaws still. Okay, um, so there we go. There's that. Um, so that's all ready to go now. I'll just check that order again, but I'm uh, it should be. Pretty wrapped with that now. That's sitting down on there, and that is that is mint in there. So just check that that's against your oiler. Okay, so the oiler can go away. Um, and now we can get on to I'll just drop that crank over there so I don't drop it all over the place. We can get on to um, being on the saw jig, which is something that I love to do. Because this thing is just freaking awesome. Um, oh. Alright, I'm going to move you over to here on the bench. So we are going on with this now. Now I have to, I like it, have, have this on for this, but um, um, because um, basically three of the um, right, just get the sorry, I'm just getting the case waltz sorted. There's five of them. There's usually I keep separate. I usually keep case bolts, cylinder bolts. I know what they are now, but it's just habit, I guess. Is that on there? Yep, that's on there. Okay. So 
So we can bring that other part of the case back in now. Um, I've got a Jenny, uh, um, I guess is a gasket kit. This is, this is the kit that comes with everything. I think this is the cheapest option for us for six. So you can see that part number there. That's what you want. That'll come with your um, all your gaskets, your seals, everything. I think that's the cheapest way to go for a 4.6. I think it's the 6.6 six that you buy everything separately and it's cheaper. Go figure. So there's your, there's your gasket for your 4.6, okay. I'm going to chuck that on there shortly. Um, I will grease up that other side of the crank. Even if this saw's a total failure, to be honest, it's just fun building it. It's just fun building it. I love building saws, um, as you well know. Right. Let that can go down there. Flip it up like that. So there you go. You can see... Um, you can see that side of the saw now. And, and we'll um, put it through. You'll be able to see me fiddling around with the case bolts. So, gasket goes on. Now I've got the gasket, I've got the um, dowels in here. Okay, so it's easy to locate her. Those are called locator dowels. And it goes on there like that. Too easy. The other, um, the other gaskets I've found too, are um, these are uh, highway, that is a, a cylinder gasket and this is a heat shield and a muffler gasket. So we've got everything, everything we need. Um, now I'll get that other case half back. Alright, you can see that that's ready to go, that's that one we put the bearing in just earlier. And. Um, so I'll slide the, cake, the uh, crank in to there, that goes there, turn this up like that, um, yeah, and then we'll just, what I do is I just slip it through because it's got that taper on that flywheel side. Make sure you, you're um, crank is not in between the casings and I will just push that into there a little bit it should just rest in there okay so you get your T27 Torx which is here that's part number if you want one cheap as 10 bucks New Zealand for a still genuine still um, Crank, crank and egg it. Um, what am I saying? Uh, ten bucks here, ten bucks in New Zealand for uh, a um, genuine steel T27. They probably make them in China for nothing. This is not connecting up yet. Usually I can get a bit of bite on the threads and they'll just start pulling in. Not the case yet. Aha, <laughs> not the case. There's one more I'll try down here. going okay so just gentle with this guys I found one that's gonna go uh, usually usually they all just want to go I'll try this um, back one to pull that in because so the whole idea is that you pull the cases together evenly because they're gonna be they're gonna be like as they're coming together they're gonna be like going like this and you just want to evenly pull them together hmm It's just not going in there. Mm. 
Oh, there we go. I can feel it pushing in. That might bite now. Let's see if I can get that to bite. Oh, yep, there we go. The bottom one. Yep, it's started now. Gasket's sitting nice. I'll take, show you what's going on shortly. Just doesn't want to bite in the back of here for some reason. Um, <clears throat> hmm. What do I do? Oh, there it goes. Just slowly. I don't want to pull that thread. just slowly going in there. Sometimes I just like to give it a little tap just to just to ease things up a little. Because it just gets a bit of pressure in there and sometimes a little tap like that can just help a lot. And you're just going gently, you want to feel that all those Reads are doing. Okay, that back one's working now. Get on this front one again. That's moving really easy. And this is just, I've sort of taught myself this method because I just don't want to um, use heat. So that's the saw, it's going together, so the cases they want to, they sort of want to move like this side will clamp together and then you want to go back to these side, this side so that this side clamps together and you, you're sort of rocking the cases through that, um, a P, uh, through that fly to, flywheel side um, crank bearing. Okay, uh, there's one screw that this blocks that I haven't put in, so there's a fifth screw still waiting here. After this is done, I'll take it off here, put it in. Um, yeah, so okay. That's going really well, <clears throat> and just want to go gentle, okay? There's no no aggression with this because you just want to be gentle on those threads they will do the work for you but just know when to um, when to uh, I guess leave off um, working on them 
see that's just tightened up too much there so and I'm not tight I'm not hardly moving these so I'm just just weary of, of what they're doing in this delicate procedure It's in there. So I'm moving that front one again. And this bottom one. So there's three main ones around the crank there, you can see. You've got this one here, this one down here, and there's one back up in here. I'm just working on this one. Yeah, as you can see the hole there that um you probably can't, but there's a hole there just where your oil pickup goes and that one's stopped, so you just stop. When they, when they pinch up, you just stop. Oh, you can hear some nice little pop, pop, pop. I like that pop, pop sound. You can hear it, because it's just, that's, that isn't, don't be afraid of that little, there's a little pop, pop. If you're doing things gently and you hear this little dunk, 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 like that. I don't know if you can hear them, little pops, but that means things are working beautifully. That sound, this little, little pops. I don't know what causes them exactly. It's just the cases going together, but yeah, there's another little pop there. And uh, it just means that everything's working right and the cases are all I'm going to have time for today okay I just want to get them wound up like that so the case is together now I'm just going to take this off here So I'm going to put that last bolt in and that last bolt goes in here and see the bar blocks it. Alright, so it goes in that, in that top bit, just up in the front of the bar studs there, so just drop that in there. Once again, T27 torques onto it. And she goes. I've been thinking about what to name this saw because it's just a bitzer of a saw. Like, you know, I think it needs a name. Feels feels like it needs a name. I don't usually name saws, but I was thinking of like Frank or something like that. You know, like for a bit of a Frankenstein, Frankenstein build. Because it's so just you know, it's that coupled, coupled mixture of genuine and um, genuine. And, Huts or highway, all those sort of things. And uh, come on, go on there. <coughs> and uh, yeah, so I'm just like, hmm, what should I call it? You want to suggest a name for the saw? Uh, different. You think it's a better name? Suits it better? Go ahead. Check in the comments. And also, um, oh, that's the other thing I do. It's once this, um, it's usually quite stiff with this method, the, the, um, the, the crank. So I just give it the slightest tap to set it into that bearing from this side. Just go. Okay. And that will loosen everything up 
because it just gets a bit stuck on that bearing and that's that's perfect now okay so because it gets it builds up a bit of tension between the crank and the um and a race of the uh, pto side bearing as you're sandwiching everything together but anyway that's the case all done Yeah, so even though that bearing slid in there, that's not moving anymore. That's good. So, yeah. It just gives me a bit of a fright sometimes, that. But it, it is common with these four sixes, I think. <coughs> so, yeah, that's all, all in there. Perfect. Ready for the next stage, okay? The next stage can be your cylinder, uh, piston, or it can be your seals. Okay, those are the next two things I would do on, on this now. So this goes back on the, on the saw jig now and ready for the next stage, which I'll do in the next video. So we're going to call this um, part one of Frankie. Frank. Don't know. Does that name work? I don't know. Don't know what we should call it. getting saws built just that third arm um, third hand that you that you need so there we go that's it guys that's how you do well my version of anyway there's lots of different ways you can do it lots of people have different ideas um, mine are not necessarily right um, but um, that's one way of doing it and I've built quite a few saws like this now and um, they've been good builds so I'm happy with them they work well they're good working saws so I'm gonna leave it there I'm gonna say still for life we'll see you guys next time we'll put the jug on this and um, uh, get going with the rest of the build so since I'm gonna do that since I'm going to do that jug next time, I'm just going to wrap a clean rag around the middle of that. Stop anything getting through. Okay, and um, I'll grease up those bearings next time as well. I usually grease them up before I put the cranks together on the stills because they're a little hard to get into. But I will grease those bearings because I like everything greased for their start in life. So there we go that's all ready for next time and just see that rags just settled across there is nothing going to get in not that anything would but anyway cool guys i'm just going to say still fluff see you next time part two the four six build uh piston cylinder seals that'll be the next one cool still fluff we'll catch you later guys see you.